this is the lab i will be using in this video to show you this is basically a windows machine let me start it if i want to access the internet on this machine i can click on the chrome and if i access youtube.com it will be working fine here we go we have the internet connectivity here everything working you can click on any of the videos it will be just available here so how basically it is working through the firewall if you check the logs here on the firewall you can watch it here you see that how my traffic is going through the IP address source 10.1.1.10 and it is translated to some other IP address right it's translated to some other NAT IP and it is accessing the internet let's see all those configuration that how you can learn NAT in the 48 firewall and access the internet on a machine which is on the 48 firewall let's start from the scratch so let me explain you the topology first that uh, what is configured here okay so this is the firewall i will be taking that in the 48 you see in the center right and uh, this is the 48 firewall that is here and i will be configuring from this machine is basically like you will be accessing internet on this one which is will be having an ip address of 10.1.1.10 which is configured this is connected via switch and that is connected on the interface of port so this is not configured i will configure this on the firewall it's port 4 is connected to the internet so this Port on the 48 firewall, I will be taking the configuration from the DHCP, and then my NAT will be also happening using the interface IP so that this IP will be part as, a, as an interface uh, internet and then it will go to there. Ignore all other things here. Well, let's suppose we are having this VPC1, VPC2, and this server, so they are connected but i'm not going to use them for today's lab okay so don't waste time now and let's start configuring our 48 firewall this gui of this 48 is accessed via port 1 that is already configured i'm not going to configure that and here we are i think it is expired let me log it once again so very first thing what i'm going to do i'm going to configure its interfaces so this 10.1.1.20 and this port 4 which will be going towards internet but will be using the dhcb so let's configure port 2 first and that name i'm giving as internal and role can be lan here and manual ip i'm going to give as 10.1.1. 20 slash 24 so there's two ways either you can give it like 255.255.255.0 or you can give it as slash 24 all right so right now i'm giving just a slash 24 and administrative access no need to give because they are just required to give access to the firewall and uh, next thing i'm going to mention the comments which you want if you want you can give like change number or whatever something remaining the port is enabled i will just click ok here so my port 2 is configured it's here given the ip address my next job is to configure port 4 so i go here select port 4 edit it this time role i'm given as a uh, let me give the name as internet role is van this time because this is connected to our towards internet and uh, ip addressing this is not will be manual it's going to be dhcp okay remaining other things will be same there's no change if you observe carefully that port 4 currently is configured as 0.0.0, .0 but it should be getting it automatically from the 
DHCP, right? So DHCP server will be there in my network, and from there it will be get it. So let me refresh it my page and let's see if I get it or not. So now it is getting on port 4, IP address it has got 192.168.137.146. Though it is the private IP address because of my network settings, but you can treat it as an public IP. So like if you are configuring this thing in the real environment, this will be actually a public IP. So for my case as well, though it is a private IP, but you can treat it like a public IP and all things what I'm going to do will be doing treating this as a public IP. All right. So this is done. Now the next job for what we are here, that is the NAT. So in order to configure NAT first, because NAT is not a separate thing here in the FortiGate firewall, you have to configure that within the policy. So for that, we go to policy and objects and firewall policy. We will be creating a new firewall policy. Click on create new. NAM you can give as internet NAT. Incoming interface from where the traffic will be coming. So the traffic will be coming from port 2 and it will be going to port 4. So I take it as port 2 here. Outgoing will be port 4. Source, it is talking about that what will be the source IP address. Okay. So I can give anything here, but I will be just restricting this to the subnet 10.1.1.10. So either I can give all that will also be working, but uh, let me create an object. Okay. So here you can create an address group or you can say address group is a different part. And here I'm giving as a n underscore 10 dot one dot zero network. Okay. And uh, this is basically a subnet. And here I'm giving as 10.1.1.0. 255.255.255.0 okay it's created and i can drag and drop here this is going for internet so it should be all we cannot restrict that only you can access these only if you are open to the internet you have to give all the destination because you are opening a port for the internet services also uh, you can restrict to HTTP or HTTPS, but uh, I'm just putting all so that you can ping as well if required. Okay. Next thing that is very important that is a NAT. That's what for we are here. So this time we can have two options. The one option is use outgoing interface address. Another is use dynamic IP pool. So this time I'm going to give an option of use outgoing interface address. So this is what is a part of NAT. So if you disable this NAT, you don't see those options. Okay, if you enable this, you see that it is asking that use outgoing interface address. So if you observe carefully, my outgoing interface is port 4. So whenever it is going to the internet, it will be taking an IP address. That's what like what we got it from IP, uh, DHCP and that was 192.168.37.147. Uh, let me check it. I forgot what it was. Let me cross check. But if I let me click it OK and I will come back here. Okay. And uh, network interfaces and my IP was 137.146. So it's basically 137.146. So whenever the traffic will be coming from this machine, it will be going like this. And whenever it is exiting from this interface of the firewall, its source IP will be translated from this IP to this IP. Whenever it's going to internet, source IP will be this 192.168.137.146. I mentioned earlier as well that treat this as a public IP in my lab environment. But usually, if you are working in the production environment, this will be your public IP, which will be connected to any of the ISPs. But so if you are in India, it could be like Airtel, Geo, or anywhere like Vodafone, anywhere, uh, any ISP have taken data. So there it will be connecting to, and they will be providing you in a public IP, or if you are 
have a big organization, you could be taking your own public IP. So for my case, just treat this IP as a public IP. Okay. So this is done. And let me go to my 48 firewall policy once again. So whenever it will be going out, it will be taking the IP address as 192.168.137.146. That's what here it means. Another option is use dynamic IP pool. So if you are using an option of use dynamic IP pool, it means that you have to define certain number of IPs. Whenever your packet will be going out, it will pick an IP address from that pool and then it will be going out. So basically, the source IP will be translated to one of the IP of this pool. So that's not what we are using right now. Okay. And uh, that's it. Uh, we're not enabling any of these options as of now. And all session, I want to log it and hit OK. Another thing is now everything is set up, set it up here. Okay. Now I can go here. I think uh, I need the default route as well, which will not be there because any traffic which is coming here, I should get the default route to go towards port 4. So let me configure that as well. I go to the routing, static routes, create new. I can take internet services or let's not take that and let's take a subnet. Okay. Here and for all 0.0.0.0, .0 my next hop gateway, there's two options. I can you give your gateway address or you can give an interface. So both the options are available. So right now I'm just taking an port 4. Another way is you can give an IP here and it will pick the port automatically. So let me give the IP address 192.168 and my default gateway is 137.2. Okay, let's do that. And you see that it is automatically taking port 4. It means that my traffic will be exiting from port 4. Remaining AD values remain same. I don't change anything. Now it's time to test the real thing. I open my Windows machine here. Right. So that's how it is. And now I go to Chrome browser. And hit DOI Times of India. Let's search DOI. And you see that internet is working here. If I open it, this page will be opening. So it means that my internet access is working fine. You want to test it, it is working because of the policies or not. You can just uh, do it uh, deactivating your policy and you see that everything will stop working. Edit it. Disable this policy. And uh, now if I want to access the internet here you see that it will the page will be not connecting let's check another one it's taking time but it will have that no internet connection you see it will not be loading it will give that no internet so just because of this firewall policy so let me enable it once again. And let me show you the logs as well that uh, what are the logs. So if you want to check the logs, you can go to the option of log and report and add the forward traffic. You can see all the traffic which is going here. If you click any of the option here, you can see how the net is happening at the source. The source IP was 10.1.1.10 and now it has been translated to 192.168.137.146. And that was the IP address of the interface which we have brought from the DHCP. All right. So that's what it is for the NAT in 48 firewall. If you have any question, feel free to write in the comment section. I will get back to you. Just for information, I'm live on my YouTube channel every Saturday, 8 to 9 p.m. If you want to join that, you can be there.
and you can ask me questions live there just write in the comment or chat i will be replying you back meanwhile you can also write in the comment section i will be getting back to you thank you guys see you soon in the next video till that bye bye